What is going on guys and girls, it's Ghost Robo and welcome back to Battleborn. Today we're taking a deep dive into the character Orendi, the Chaos Witch. She's the most magical of the ten revealed thus far and one of my personal favorites. Thank you guys so much for the huge support on the first Battleborn video. I'm very glad that you guys are excited and interested in this game. I'll be bringing you tons of info and footage and cool stuff as we lead up to launch. But today we're focusing on the Wigwam Wizardry of this majestic beast. Arendi is very cool. Might be a slow starter, but once you super up, she is pretty darn strong. Checking out her moves here. These are Chaos Bolts, her basic attack. The secondary version of Chaos Bolts fires four energy blasts at once. Got a little bit of melee scratch there. That's Nullify, where she procures energy in front of her and bounces backwards. And we wrap things up with Shadowfire Pillar, my personal favorite, uh, where she brings a beam of pain down from the sky. Also, Paradigm Shift is her super, but we'll unlock that at level five. Let's dive a little deeper into the DNA system here, and we'll go through the first four levels here. We'll stop uh, at stage four, um, where we have Preamble of Pain or Double Pillar. On the left, we can give Shadowfire Pillar uh, extra damage, plus 90 damage over one and a half seconds, or on the right, you're seeing Double Pillar, which is for five seconds after using Shadowfire Pillar, Arendi can cast a second Shadowfire Pillar, dealing half as much damage. That's the one I went with, and that's the one I think defines my build uh, and my just bouncy combos that you're about to see today. It's really, really cool if you go in and use Nullify to get yourself some distance, put up a shadow fire pillar, and then lay a second one down as the enemies rush at you. You can seriously go ham with the point totals that you are putting on the pain train uh, for your foes. But I love the combo system and the way that it all kind of factors in for Battleborn. I think this is what makes the combat so fun and replayable for me. Because remember, I played through this same area, this same level, uh, this same campaign co-op level many, many times, and it didn't get dull for me, because I was always trying to better my score, I was always trying to find new ways for the characters to be successful, and always trying to find more fluid and flowing ways uh, to move about the battlefield. Arendi is a very fast character, she's one that doesn't have a whole lot of health, but packs an extreme punch, and she's a slow starter, I say, because in the beginning you don't have all your points uh, put into the different categories to level up your moves and your attacks. Like when we get to stage five, we obviously unlock our ultimate, um, but then we unlock some things like, for example, we'll be able to reduce the cooldown of one of our moves by using another. So if we activate Shadowfire Pillar, we can reduce Nullify's cooldown. As we move along the list there, we'll get to like level seven, um, where we have Force of Will, which can increase the damage of all skills by 15%, or Essence Theft, where all skills used by Arendi heal her, for 20% uh, of the damage dealt, which is crazy. So as you see, we would be building towards a character that can be much more aggressive in her play because she'd be regaining some of that health as she goes forward. Um, and I tried not to die very much uh, because you want her to be a major damage dealer. As you saw there, we're using the Chaos Bolts in conjunction with that double Shadow Fire Pillar to really put the pain on to these enemies. And I think this is where teamwork comes in extreme handy because uh, on a more difficult level or with the difficulty tuned higher, you'd really want someone like Miko or a healer type character to be backing Arendi up as well as having more of a melee character probably drawing the aggro of the enemies so Arendi would not be susceptible to so much of their Spitfire. You don't want her to be sucked down early. You're noticing I'm not getting a lot of kills here, um, nor am I dealing a whole ton of damage. That's being left to Marquise uh, and Phoebe and Thorn early on here. We're playing with Phoebe, Thorn, Marquise, and Boulder uh, in this video. And I wanted to let you guys vote on who you wanted to see next. There's a bunch of different characters that people were interested in, uh, but besides Arendi, the two most popular were Wrath and Phoebe. So if you want Phoebe, the female fencing fiend, vote for her down in the comments below next. And if you want Wrath, the red sword rebel, vote for him down in the comments below. And that is where we will sort of guide this choose your own adventure uh, for the next video. Shadowfire pillaring up on this guy. My shields are down, my health is low, but as long as I stay back, uh, did not let that one uh, work out so well for me. Got a little too greedy. Um, without the shields, you do need to be careful, similar to Borderlands. Um, it was interesting to see some of your reactions to the game, and I think we got a little bit of clarity that this really isn't like the other MOBAs. It really isn't even like Borderlands all that much. It kind of occupies its own unique fun space, um, and my teammate are letting me occupy my own fun space in the realm uh, of the afterlife there. Uh, when you die, you respawn. Decently close to the action, kind of just got to sprint back to where you are. Um, there are obviously designated spots where you can spawn back in. My team is struggling. We got two guys down, um, which means three of us are up for five total friends uh, going to war here together. Chaos Bolts fire really fast, um, and that's another thing. Like, some of the characters are able to fire 
very quickly compared to others, some with, with reload, some without reload. For example, Thorn, as you saw in the last video, uh, she was the Eldred girl with the bow and arrow. Uh, you know, she's not reloading per se, but you are only able to fire one arrow at a time. Um, some characters with guns, uh, like Marquise uh, or whatnot, Caldarius will be reloading, whereas Arendi is kind of just blazing her trail as she goes. Um, and you, you can stay back a decent distance um, and, and still deal damage. I do think that... I don't think that the attacks have an infinite range. I could be wrong on that, um, but I'm pretty sure if you were, like, way far back, it would be problematic. Uh, but look, we locked that guy down. That was an epic use of me and Thorn working together subconsciously uh, to steal health from that dude and suck up some orbs to regain my health um, and my shields there. I still think that competitive play is going to be incredibly interesting. And a few people were asking, like, talk about that, talk about that, but really, I don't know anything about that. Uh, nothing's been revealed, so as soon as it is, I will definitely speak more on it. Clarifying a couple other points, this game is next-gen only. Xbox One, PC, and PlayStation 4. Um, it's not going to be coming until the last gen. It is a full retail release. All of these characters are in the, uh, the on the disc when you get it. So there's these 10 plus 15 more that have not been revealed, which I think is plenty. A lot of people these days worry about multiplayer-only games. Uh, do they house enough content to be worth $60? And sometimes I think it's justified, but it's absolutely not here for two reasons. One, you're getting 25 very unique characters. Uh, as you can see, just the difference between Thorn and Arendi is pretty darn massive. And then next episode, when we move to either Phoebe or Wrath, you're going to see a, a whole nother just element of what the Battleborn can be um, when they go to work. Double shout fire pillar grabbing the kill there. Um, plus this game does technically have a single player and there are story elements incorporated here as you're seeing from different characters speaking and whatnot and overall lore um, that exists within this universe. Again, I'm getting kind of greedy there as I scale the scoreboard, uh, which is causing me to die a few times. I do apologize for it, uh, but I level up as I die, which is interesting. So we're getting to pick here um, our level five perk plus we'll get paradigm shift shift, which is basically a giant energy blast. Think of it like a Dragon Ball Z-style attack. Um, they're very specific with the attacks, uh, which leads me to believe that they are balancing this game to hell and back. Uh, because, for example, for Shadowfire Pillar, it, it, it lets you know that after 1.5 seconds, Arendi summons a mighty pillar of shadow and flame at a target location, dealing 208 to 280 damage. Now, all of your different things that you're picking um, in your DNA system there are doing things uh, like increasing the damage by plus 150, or, you know, 10% this, or plus 90 damage over 1.5 seconds, or giving you, you know, 5 seconds of cooldown, 15% extra overall damage, 20% lifesteal, 60% shield penetration. So it's all very numerical and mathematical, um, which leads me to believe that they're spending a bunch of time on balancing, and, and rightfully so, because as soon as you take this into the competitive PvP realm, it needs to be that way, so all these different Battleborn can function and fight um, versus each other, at least within a team structure. Sure, they don't have to be able to go head-to-head. -head. It would be unfair to say, hey, let's pit Wrath and Arendi head-to-head, -head, because one can get up close and personal and deal tons of damage with a decent amount of health, and the other needs to stay back. Right there, you're seeing the hand signs of a freaking awesome Freakazoid wizardry as we cast our magic spell, uh, at our enemies, and really just, this is probably my favorite part of the game, uh, as you're seeing right here, besides the variety, which I think is just oh so cool, and the different skills, being able to use everything in conjunction with quick cooldowns, and then different abilities that are causing your cooldowns to decline even faster and decrease even quicker, um, you're able to just chain things together and grab so many skill points and so much damage, super just... Oh, it's an amazing feeling when you're able to, like I said, use those Chaos Bolts while the Shadow Fire Pillar is coming down, while you quickly cast your second Shadow Fire Pillar. And it's a game that rewards, like, skill. It re rewards you playing really well on the controller um, and being able to maneuver your character with quite a bit of mobility as well. Like, you do have a jump, you do have a melee. Um, some of the attacks for the characters just modify their positioning as well, like Arendi's Nullify. Um, creating that burst of energy that then bounces her back, it's a great idea. You can get in deal some damage, like, the way I like to think of it is I'm using my Chaos Bolts as I walk towards an enemy, and then when they get too close or I get too close, I cast Nullify to bounce me back, and then as they pursue me, I dump in the Shadow Fire Pillars, and you can just get in this really nice routine. It almost feels like a fighting game of sorts or like a character action title, um, where more than a shooter where you're just like, target, reticle, target, reticle, target, reticle, you're comboing moves and using the environment to facilitate your ultimate destruction and and when you get one of those things where you see like the massive amount of damage popping it's pretty darn rewarding the final battle uh, of this demo 
when we fight against the Conservator, um, you can really go to town utilizing your entire moveset and just bringing a whole bunch of pain. And I mentioned this in the first video, but one thing I, I also appreciate is that it's not a game where you're saving your supers for like some perfect occasion. I think that would dilute the originality and sort of the magic of the experience. You know, there's plenty of games where you do have an ultimate ability or you do have something really cool like Shadowfire Pillar and you want to use it only like at a boss encounter or only like at a critical juncture because you know it's going to waste and, and then you won't have it for a while. And sure, the cooldowns can be kind of long. Uh, I believe that her Arendi's ultimate is on a 30 second timer. But once you move through that DNA tree, you'll see that Shadowfire Pillar and Nullify are reloading really quickly. Um, and that's exciting to me uh, because, again, it, it just it encourages you to play almost, like I said, like a fighting game, third-person action. I mean, it's really the MOBA nature coming to the forefront where you're using these skills with enough frequency that your character feels unique and it feels like your play experience with your favorite uh, is very different than your friends, even though you're all going to accomplish the same goal, the same mission. Um, and again, this is like, uh, I'm just feasting here like a fat kid waiting for cake because I know that all those enemies are going to come through the door, and while my team is like, oh, check out our cool robot dog wolf thing with the nuclear device on the top, I'm just waiting for this door to open so I can cast Double Shadow Fire Pillar and just eat all these points. Uh, it's like Casino Night. And I'm the only one that can win the roulette because we just gobbled up a whole boatload there. A little bit of the, the, the dialogue there, flavor stuff going on, uh, which I think adds a lot to the game, especially if you're going to be playing this either with randoms or alone. Obviously with friends, you'll probably be talking over it like I am. Uh, but if you did want to play this solo, if you did want to grind out characters, or if you did want to, you know, look to just test out characters, or we talked about, you know, the meta system where you will be able to level these guys up uh, and unlock new stuff for them, um, it's, it's exciting that they do have more of that, you know, typical single-player lore baked in there to keep things feeling fleshed out, so you're not in a situation where, wow, this is multiplayer only and it's just a weird bot mode or something like that. No, Battleborn has definitely tried to alleviate that concern by implementing a full-on um, single-player co-op structure uh, to give you guys and uh, give everyone who plays some enjoyment. And I also want to just briefly mention, I don't feel like it even needs to be said, but I saw a couple people. Uh, I'm in no way sponsored or paid or anything to make this video or any of these videos or cover the game or anything. Um, I really love the game at E3. I probably played 30 plus games at E3. My schedule was jam-packed. I had appointment after appointment after appointment. I played things for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Wii U, handheld, um, PC. I was all over the place. Indie, AAA, the big shooter like Battlefront and Black Ops 3, uh, some more of the, the silly stuff like uh, Zelda Triforce Heroes, Mario Tennis, um, some Mario Maker, I mean I was all over the board. Until Dawn for Sony, um, I played uh, just an eclectic mix and Battleborn stood out um, because of its original blend of genres and just its, its fun and fast paced gameplay. I think that can only be fully understood when you get a chance to go hands-on with this. Um, but if you do, it really, like, the quality shines through. And I know Gearbox has had some, you know, they had a stumbling point uh, with, like, Aliens, Colonial Marines. But also remember that Borderlands, when it first came out, was kind of a revelation uh, in terms of that type of a game and sort of the loot-based shooter uh, with the big open world, especially in the, the more early to mid days of, of the Xbox 360 gen. Like, that was a very impressive title. Um, and so they're not ones to sit on their laurels and make something stupid. Like, Battleborn definitely shows a lot of... I don't know, I'd like to say creativity, but also, like, desire uh, and determination to create something unique. So, uh, to me, it's, like, my kind of game, and and that's why I speak so highly of it, because I genuinely like it, and I wouldn't be here making another video or, you know, promising you guys a series of videos if I didn't enjoy it. That would be just silly. Like, my channel, more and more over the years, has become about what do I like and what do I want to showcase, rather than just piling on videos on the most prominent titles or on stuff that I know is going to do super well because after a while like that gets really boring and gets very dry and you feel like you're just a shell of yourself but I genuinely like Battleborn and the thing that really like made me be like wow I want to go home and make a series on this is that I, at E3 I played this same demo four times in a row um, and I was like every time it was more and more fun because I got better and better with the movesets, I got more and more familiar with the enemies, I gained, you know, sort of an awareness of the environment, and just the way that Battleborn wants to be played, and in that sense, it is sort of like a high score 
fast, like a, a speedrun dream, um, at least in these PvE levels. I Again, like, PvP, I think, is going to be probably my favorite thing, although I don't know, because in general, like, I'm not a big MOBA guy. I'm not one who goes crazy on, like, Call of Duty multiplayer um, and, you know, prestiges and all that. I'm not one who has, has been sucked into to LOL or Dota um, or even Smite. So maybe I will like more of this stuff, uh, perhaps better, uh, but I really think that the PvP here um, can be sweet. Time will tell. Um, we're approaching the end encounter here, and I really like this one because so many enemies appear, and I'm already at a high enough level uh, where I'm dealing just a mondo amount of damage, uh, and Arendi then really shows her true strength as we get up close and personal, are able to finish people off with stuff like Nullify, Shadowfire Pillar, uh, and occasionally that Paradigm Shift. And you'll notice I don't even use Paradigm Shift as much as I should because I'm in that mindset of like, hey, I gotta save this to my ultimate, but I feel like Battleborn encourages you um, to spew those off pretty darn quickly um, as best you can, which I really like. Um, Alright, uh, so maybe we do actually have a 50 second cooldown on Paradigm Shift, which is, is longer than 30, and probably rightfully so, but still, that's not short or long, like, it doesn't lean too much in one direction. Over the course of this 20 minute level here, which isn't even the full level, I believe, uh, because you'll see at the end a final giant boss that we're not able to fight, um, you're able to get quite a few of those things put in. One thing I don't know and I would love to find out is do you start every level uh, at level 1? Like here we started seemingly at level 4, but I think that might be because of this is a demo. Um, I'm checking the stats here to make sure I'm moving up the ranks. And you can see my kill count might not be the highest, but my damage is definitely reigning supreme. And um, we can augment the drone here with some of our uh, currency, some of our crystals. And I'm interested to see what other uses that that has. Uh, I wonder if you'll be able to buy anything like... Uh, you've seen in the video like an overshield and while we can buy like stuff for this drone and there are some turret spots uh, in this final area that you can I believe rebuild turrets it would be sweet if I could like buy overshields or if they incorporated you know like the vending machine system is a big part of Borderlands I think it'd be really awesome either in PvE or PvP if there was a way to kind of augment your own character and I'm not saying like buy an, an extra move but maybe buy like a supercharge or buy you know an overcharge for your shield or something like that where you could spend these crystals in different ways to encourage you to get them and also to encourage you to collect uh, those specific points if you notice there's a couple giant crystals that will burst into other crystals and you'll definitely want to collect those if you're you know if you're interested in spending obviously but but why would you do that as opposed to killing guys and boosting your score and looking uh, to rank up and whatnot. So I hope that there's a, a further justification for those crystals besides like a set piece usage, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, I like fighting these guys because they put up a little shield around them and they seem to behave with a little more intelligence uh, than sort of the, their like zombie uh, first form, which are these dudes over here, basically like husks. Uh, and I wonder how advanced the enemies will get as well as the different uh, kind of races of enemies uh, to me that's like always one of the coolest parts like when you get a collector's edition of the game and you dive into the art book or when you're just looking like at screenshots and whatnot um, I think that it's pretty striking to see like okay here are you know this areas enemy types and here's the other areas and I'm guessing in this game we'll get combinations uh, as you saw early on you know sort of more of the weird whatever the heck those things are giant robot rhinos and now uh, more demonic tentacle beasts uh, but what are the other varieties and how will they factor in uh, and how many bosses will be getting like the Vrelsi Conservator uh, is a very very cool looking boss and I hope there's the bunch of these um, a couple people made like the destiny comparison in the comments and I do think it's I think it's like not entirely appropriate, but also at the same time decently apt. And it's one that I made myself um, because it, it is a game about cooperatively taking on a bunch of respawning enemies and using your moveset and skills uh, to efficiently deal with them. And I could see like a strike mode type thing or like a DLC, a boss rush being really fun in this game, especially considering that the characters have a lot more personality than something like Destiny um, and are a little bit crazier and just on screen action looks freaking like a firework show from the 4th of July at your most insane grandparents lake where they buy all the best stuff uh, even though it's illicit um, because just look at this like the Varelsi Conservator is doing insane stuff I'm doing insane stuff and we make it to level 10 uh, which I feel pretty proud of that shows how much damage we were pushing out the big guy comes in and uh, that beats the heck out of my droid drone but that's gonna wrap up this video make sure to let me know in the comments down below if you want to see Wrath who is a melee sword wielder, or if you want to see Phoebe, who's kind of a mixture. Um, boy, do I love Phoebe. She is pretty darn sweet. So just comment, type down uh, Phoebe or Wrath, or like someone else's comment uh, that 
put Phoebe or Wrath, and whichever one gets the most votes, that is who will be in the next video. If you guys enjoyed this one, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. I do appreciate it. Thanks so much for your time. Hopefully you had fun and got a little bit greater insight into what Battleborn stands for. Super excited for this one. Uh, definitely one of my most anticipated, and you guys are one of the most awesome fan bases as well. Until next time, everyone, thanks again for watching. Fantastic day. Drink some hot chocolate, and we will see you all later.